Here's the brief for this operation. Hello, and welcome to NoCap Game Design. In this episode, I'm looking at the mission profile for the third operation in Valkyria Chronicles, titled Retreat from Barul. Today, I want to ask the question, how do the developers balance the game's challenge in an early level like this? What design techniques or advice can we learn from this early level to apply to the early levels in your games? But first, a mission briefing. This is a Defend the Point mission, the first of its kind in this game. In the previous two levels, the player advanced towards a stationary enemy, but here things are flipped. The enemy will advance towards a player from two directions and attempt to break through the gate. The main problem for a player to solve comes in the form of an enemy tank. Now, in the previous level, the developers did an amazing job introducing it and making it clear to a player that they are not equipped to deal with a tank. And if you're curious about how to introduce content to a player, that's another video that you should really consider checking out. In this level, however, the developers tell the player, without the friendly tank, it is impossible to destroy theirs. Then they repeat it in different words. Hold them off until Welkin arrives with the tank. The developers are trying to do two things here. First, being set up to fail is not fun and may kill a player's motivation. Why play the level if there isn't even a chance at success? So the developers combat this by making it clear in the mission briefing that help is on the way. A friendly tank will eventually arrive and you can use that to win the mission. And second, if the player didn't understand that the plan was to wait for backup, then they may attempt to take the tank head on with their scout units. This would go poorly. The player just doesn't have the right tools available. In either of these two situations, feeling like you've been set up to fail, or just straight up failing, is not a fun gameplay experience. So it's critical for the developers to get the message across. Wait for backup, then take out the enemy tank. It will keep a player motivated in the face of sure defeat, and it provides a clear plan or goal for the player to follow through on and achieve. A main goal of good game design is to build an experience that avoids frustration while also providing a challenging, but clear, path towards success. This mission has good game design, so the goal and high-level strategy for this mission is now clear to the player and hopefully also to you, the viewer. But back to the original question, how do the developers balance the game's challenge in an early level like this? In the previous level, the developers trickled in about one enemy per turn so as not to overwhelm the player. If that was a trickle, then this level is a steady stream. For several turns, two to four enemies will rush the player, not to mention the unkillable tank but the player does have the architecture on their side. These sandbags provide a defensive bonus. The tall grass makes characters invisible, and the watchtower provides clear shots to anyone approaching. The developers have stacked the deck in the player's favor, not by making the enemies weaker, but by building a level that naturally favors the player's side. These defensive structures remind me of level 2 in the first Halo game, which also features a series of defend the point style missions to help ease a player into more realistic gameplay situations. That level does have its differences, so I encourage you to check out the video I did analyzing it, link in the top right corner. But the pattern is clear, defend the point style missions allow a developer to increase the difficulty but also reduce the complexity, which ultimately keeps the challenge fairly stable and comparable to the previous early levels. So the level architecture is helping the player, but that's not the only thing. The enemies themselves are also helping the player. Notice how the tank, the most powerful enemy unit, which could kill a player's unit in one hit, is focused solely on the gate. It's scripted to more or less ignore the player, effectively taking it out of the game. Even some enemy shock troopers are more concerned with throwing grenades than with attacking the player. This could be a very one-sided fight. The enemy units could obliterate the player, but the developers balance out the challenge here by having them channel their attacks toward a dummy target. This is a good game design technique. At the end of it, the player will feel accomplished for taking out a larger force, and because the enemy units did attack on every turn, the player won't feel like the enemies went easy on them. Again, comparing this to Halo, Halo features a lot of friendly AI units in the early levels, who in part acted as bullet sponges for the Master Chief. Setting up non-player targets like this makes the game feel exciting without putting the player in real danger, and therefore helping to reduce the challenge. The last point I'm going to touch on for this level, when the friendly tank does eventually show up, it comes in from behind. 
This gives the player a natural flanking position and allows for easy access to the exposed weak part of the enemy tank. I think this was done more for the tutorial and to formally introduce the glowing weak spot, but it is also an effective technique to make the early level a little easier. Give the player direct access to the weakest link in the enemy's defenses. Also, notice here, the enemy tank is placed in this awkward sideways angle blocking the street. It did this on every one of my playthroughs, and I think it's because the developers wanted the player to accidentally hit the treads and learn about the two different health pools the tank has, one for the body and one for the tire treads. But I'm getting off topic. To summarize, how do the developers balance the challenge of this level? Well, they set up a major challenge for the player and face them up against a formidable foe but they also craft the level architecture to provide natural benefits to the player. Choke points, defensive structures, and the high ground. Additionally, there's a bullet sponge that is pulling attention and attacks away from the player's units, which makes the firefight much more even. And finally, when the backup does arrive, it has easy and direct access to the glowing critical spot on the enemy. All of this together allows the developers to introduce the player to more powerful units and difficult encounters without introducing a sudden spike in game challenge. In your games, as you design early levels, consider using some of the techniques discussed here. Don't be afraid of throwing an impossibly powerful unit against the player, but make sure that the level is designed in a way that enables a player to succeed. In the next episode, we explore the capital city of Gallia, and more importantly, begin to level up our units and spend our gold. I'll see you there. Since ancient times, within its walls stood the castle Rand Greece, and within its unicorn spire resided Cordelia, Gallia's princess.